Okay, as you guys are getting ready to take your seats, we'll go ahead and get started with our cabinet meeting. First of business, we'll do our introduction of our Chattanooga State Administration. So will Dr. Rebecca Ashford please stand? Ms. Debbie Adams. Vice President Gardner Long. Dr. Beth Norton. Ms. Tammy Swenson. And also, are there any other vice presidents or deans in the um, bill to please stand? Mm -hmm. Dr. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Trey Powell. I'm the Dean of Engineering and IT. attend a very exciting meeting that's occurring on our campus February 26th at 10 a.m. and this is a great recognition that we it's, it's secret I can't tell you what it is you've got to come but the college will be re receiving a special special resident recognition get it out um, and it's all about our work that we're doing towards student success. So we would love for any students to come and help us in, join, in celebrating this event. I've heard that there will be food at this event and some prizes and giveaways. So it's in the humanity. No, it's not in the humanities auditorium. Where is it? Is it? I thought it was it's in the humanities. I, I was late to the meeting. <laughs> I was late to the meeting, and that's why I was chosen to speak about this. But uh, it's in the humanities auditorium at 10 o'clock on February the 26th. So hopefully you can come and celebrate this wonderful recognition that we're going to announce that day. If there's any questions, I'm going to let my friend Dr. Norton answer because she was at on time for the meeting. Okay? Any questions? All right. All right, so now we'd like to open the floor to any students that may have any questions or. So any students who have any questions or concerns? Yes, yes ma'am. Hey, okay, so recently, um, Hamilton County Schools, um, they've been closing to our delays. Uh -huh. um, microphone. Yeah. How does that fit with, uh, with CHAP State schedule and upcoming like holidays? It doesn't seem like it's, you know, um, it doesn't mesh well with like, the schedule. Okay. Uh, in regards to like childcare and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But do you need the dean's be able to provide that answer? I'm not a dean, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Hamilton County Schools and all of our school districts, and we do serve students from a number of school districts. They. We don't follow the same calendar they follow. 
and, and I know that's an issue with children. I also have children who it can be an issue, um, but I'm also not a student, so it can be an even bigger issue if you're a student. Um, so, first of all, our holiday schedule. So, Chattanooga State is part of the Tennessee Board of Regents system, and there is a system-wide calendar that we all follow in terms of federal holidays and uh, things like that. Hamilton County Schools is, of course, administered by the county, and they have their, their school board, and they come up independently with their own calendar. So in terms of that sort of thing, those two typically go online line, um, because we're kind of administered so differently. The issue with closing is a real challenge. Um, Hamilton County Schools, you know, one of the things that factors in to their decision-making process is bus schedules and, and um, you know, students waiting for buses and um, that sort of thing. For us, we're looking at accessibility to campus. So one of the things we've been looking at very closely this week at this campus is the river and trying to gauge how much rain we're getting, what's the river doing, you know, when is the river going to crest, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm really proud of the work that Guy did pretty close communication. Um, I get the great privilege of making that decision about closing. And uh, I do consult clearly with facilities. I consult with other VPs. The academic VP is very critical in that decision making and determining what's happening on campus, you know, academically. Because that's our biggest, well, two biggest concerns student safety and then also academics. And it always weighs very heavily on me knowing that whatever is happening with the, our largest school district that we serve affects our students, many of our students, and it affects many of our employees who are parents with kids in public schools. So I don't really have a good answer for you. You know, um, I had heard earlier this week that this was being brought up by students who are parents and have this issue. And I've been thinking over the last couple of days about, you know, what can we do as a college to address that? And, and looking at the number of times Hamilton County closes, I'm not sure that closing every time Hamilton County closes would be a good decision for Chattanooga State and our students and our employees. Um, you know, I think about every time they have a teacher work day and that sort of thing. But at least those days are planned out and you can get the calendar at the beginning of the year. You can, you can make arrangements for child care for those. Um, and I've thought about, do we need to gather a group of students like yourself who are parents to meet with some of the folks here in key um, leadership positions to say, okay, here are the parameters that we have to deal with. What are some, what could be some solutions that we have on campus to help students and employees who have children where suddenly, you know, you have no choices but to maybe bring your kids to school. You know, if you're thinking, I, I need to get to school, I need to take this test, or I just don't want to get behind, I'm a good student. But at the same time, I'm a mom or a dad, and I don't want to be a bad mom or dad, and, you know, leave my kids. So I don't, right now, kind of that's where I am, that maybe we need to have this dialogue and see if there are some solutions that we could have on campus. Because I would, I would hate to close every time Hamilton County does, especially because it really has been very frequently over the last few years. And I mean, I, could, I would see that being very detrimental <laughs> to us academically um, to close every time. Um, so I don't really think that's the answer. That's what I want to talk about. So her question, her follow-up question was, 
is there anything in the works right now, like drop-in daycare or something like that? I think these are the options we need to start looking at. Or, you know, can we loosen up, um, can we loosen up restrict rules and restrictions and policies? Can we allow for um, source some sort of distance education option on days like that? I mean, I think these are all things that we need to explore because it is an issue, and it's uh, you know to pretend that our students and our employees don't have don't have kids in schools. I think is a, a mistake. Okay, does that seem reasonable to you? And you're going to give me your your name and email and phone number, <laughs> so I'll give you a little notepad for you to write that down on so we can get in touch with you. Okay. Yes, sir. There is a daycare on campus. Students do have to be enrolled in the daycare. Um, I don't know what sort of regulatory the options there are for drop-ins. Um, I don't know what all the regulations are, but I know daycares are very highly regulated. And um, they have some very strict rules about who can be there. And it usually has to do with liability. Trey? I just wanted to encourage uh, students who are affected by the closing to communicate with your instructors. Uh, a lot of them will work with you knowing that you have to possibly stay home with um, your children uh, due to the closure. So if you communicate ahead of time, send them an email saying, hey, due to the closure, I have to stay home and take care of my kids due to lack of child care? Is there a way that I can make up the work or come at a different time? And I'm sure that the instructors will work with you on that. I know it's a band-aid on the problem and not the, the ultimate solution, but we are here to work with you and make sure you get through. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I as you form this committee, I would encourage you to also include students from Marion County and Bledsoe County and because when you look at spring break schedules and all those things, Hamilton County and Marion County and Bledsoe County, and I, they're all different. And so, you know, those are additional issues when you're across county. And the Georgia, yeah, so anyway. We would never be open. <laughs> 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 Are there any other questions or concerns? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know who would be the person to talk to about this, so I just brought it here. But I have a night class on Tuesday nights uh, in Ami, and when we get our classes dark. So there's no lights on in the Omni parking lot in like the back where the students park at. So like the parking lot lights are never on, at least when I go on Tuesday nights. So I don't want to talk to him about that because just because it's kind of a safety concern because I walk to my car and somebody can be waiting for me in my car and I can't see them or, you know, somebody can be, you know, just with stuff that's going on today, it's kind of a little concerning, especially since I'm, you know, a girl. So I don't know who to talk to about that. I will, whoever said that about the, the lights, I will take note of that and uh, talk with our security people this evening. Is that, I'm not aware of any light issue on that. We've added a lot of lights, and if they're not working, we need to get to the field, so we'll do that. Who else had a question? You can also always call security if you want them to walk into your car or just kind of be there. You can always do that, and they'll be happy to do it. And are you talking about behind the business? Yeah, like only yeah. yeah, that part. Mm -hmm. We're in the um, Health Science Center building, and since we've come back from break on the second floor in the student lounge, the microwave is broken, 
there's supposed to be two microwaves and only one is working. And at lunchtime, it's a big issue because we have that entire floor, which is radiology, dental hygiene, dental assisting, and we get physical therapy, and we also get overflow from the nursing downstairs with one microwave. And most of our programs were there all day long, and so we need to bring our lunches, and there's no other, other place to buy food in that building. So I was just wondering how we can get that microwave fixed. purchased like three or so for one of the lounges over there but I was not aware that uh, another one was out so I will ask the health science center staff over there to let me know the number and we'll get those give them a place. Thank you. Are there any other questions, concerns?
it's not hard to do. You just sit down with me at whatever time we decide, and I'll discuss the rules of campaigning so that we make sure we follow the Constitution that we have. Um, I promise I'll go easy on everybody so it will be super, um, super relaxed. And then um, after we do the pre-campaign meetings, the very next day, March 19th, the campaign will begin. Um, that is completely left up to the candidates on how they campaign. This isn't a major campaign like the national election, so you, are, you do have limited resources, but there are ways that you can go out and campaign. Talking with students, um, perhaps getting connection with the wall or the communicator, the newspaper here on campus, and you know putting something in that setting up times for speeches, we encourage you to do all of that, really connect with the students, and let them know why you decided to run for vice president or president, um, what are your stances, like what, what are you really trying to push, what would you like to see change, what are you a fan of on campus, things like that, so there is a campaigning aspect to this. Um, so that will begin March, 9th, uh, yeah, March 19th at 8 a.m., and then we will have a campus forum for all the candidates to come, that will be March 30th, um, and we do not have the time for that yet. We'll be getting that out at a later date, but just keep that in mind. Um, and then the campaign will begin um, April 1st and 2nd, or not the campaign, to be the election will begin April 1st and 2nd, um, will be the two days that we are able to vote. Um, you'll have to vote online, I believe, so we'll be sending out an email with that information. We'll probably also have something set up in the cafeteria, um, maybe iPads or something, so um, to make it a little bit easier um, to stop by. And we would encourage everybody to go out and vote, but also don't just vote for whoever. Talk to people that are running and find out what they're thinking, so that way when we do elect a vice president and president of SGA, they'll be better to represent the whole body of the Chattanooga State campus. Um, we've already been talking about making sure we um, have better contact this year with the Kimball and Dayton campuses. Um, they're both involved in the elections as well, and we want them to be represented well. So we're going to try to make sure that this is um, a very clear process and everybody very transparent and everybody knows what's going on. And we would really encourage everybody to come out and vote. Um, so some of the requirements, if you are interested in being it, you have to have a 2.5 GPA at the time of election and then maintain a 2.0 GPA during your election. Um, it starts after this spring graduation and goes all the way to next graduation. You have to be enrolled in Chattanooga State during that entire time, okay? So if you're graduating in the spring, unfortunately you cannot be our vice president and president. So you also have to be enrolled in at least 12 credit hours. So that's just something to keep in mind if you how you balance your class schedule, make sure that you are able to do that as well. And then also you must have um, served in some sort of leadership position in a club or organization. Um, that's fairly lenient, just come talk to us and explain what you've served in. And most people I would say have. Um, I think I've been informed that most of the people in this room are um, a representative of some kind of club or organization anyway, so most of the people here would probably already have that um, done as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can stop by and see me today or come by Student Life or Student Government later and I'll be more than glad to answer any questions. And if I don't know the answer, which is probably pretty likely, I'll go find an answer because that's my job. So, um, but anyway, we would encourage everybody to really think about running for this and if not, getting involved in campaigning, voting, all of those things. Um, we definitely want this to be you know, an organization that really represents the student body well. And I feel like we've done that very well in years past. We have a great president and vice president right now, and we would like to continue that train. So thank you for letting me speak to you guys. All right, so next we'd like to talk about Classy. So we did recently approve a request for a five day kappa, which is $1,525. Um, if you'd be interested in submitting a policy request for your club, we just ask that you do submit it six weeks prior to your event that you're planning on going to. You also do need a signature page, which is the club advisor, the club representative, and the head department. <clears throat> also, uh, the policy re uh, request forms can be found on ChatSync. So now I'd like to invite Liz Norella to speak about yeah. <laughs> Are you going to ask me for extra credit for that? <laughs> that's what I was, I was 
was expecting. Um, so tomorrow at 2.30 in the Health Science Center, we, we're very fortunate to have a group of people coming to campus to pre present what they call the defamation experience. So essentially, you will come into this room in the Health Science Center and they're going to present it, a case. Uh, they're actors, it's like a theatrical production. Uh, they'll present a case for about an hour and then the audience becomes the jury. And so they will lead a discussion as though everyone there is sitting as part of a jury and we will deliberate on who should win in the case. So it's a really interesting opportunity to kind of get the experience of what it's like to try to decide these very thorny issues of law. Um, a lot of instructors, myself included, hey guys at the back, are providing extra credit to people who come. You should plan to be there for about two hours. Um, so I know some of you work or have other commitments, but um, I've been told that there will be some refreshments, pizza. including pizza. pizza. So <clears throat> perhaps that will entice you. And I just want to say one thing because this is really critically important and you'll hear us say it many times tomorrow if you come. Because this is being presented like a play, you cannot video or photograph during the, the performance. So uh, we have been told by the actors that if they see somebody doing that, they will stop it immediately. And that's I work in student life, um, so I'm here to talk about Hats Off to Excellence, and this is our um, award ceremony that we host at the end of every year, and we have lots of different awards. So we're, the first set is, it's grouped by academic awards, club awards, and then we have kind of specialty awards that everybody, anybody on campus can nominate students and faculty and staff for. So. Um, I'm going to talk about those awards um, because everybody it, it applies to everybody here. So the first award is Eye of the Tiger, and this award is meant to recognize students who might have dealt with a difficult situation but still persisted to graduate. Our next award is Debbie Wagner, the Above and Beyond Award, and this recognizes a faculty or staff member who has gone um, above and beyond their job description to help students succeed in any aspect. Um, and then so our last award here is the Advisor of the Year, and this is this applies to um, obviously advisors of, of clubs and organizations. So, um, so for any advisor that demonstrates a deep commitment to the success of their students, so the club members will nominate their advisors for this one. So the nomination deadline is Friday, March 6th. So this is the Friday before spring break. So just remember to put in your nominations before then. And to nominate, we have a um, website this year. So it is chattanoogastate.edu slash hats dash excellence. Or you can just go on the Chat State website and search Hats Off to Excellence, and it'll be the first or second link on there for you. Good? Make sure you nominate. Thank you. OK, now Diedrich to speak about the upcoming census and also uh, student life. All right, guys, we do have a complete count committee on campus. Um, I'm kind of leading, leading that up. Our student representative is Sydney Matthews. She works along with me. But um, right now, what we're doing for the Census 2020, we're really trying to promote this text campaign. So if you can go ahead and text that number right now, if you will, you will receive information on about the 20, Census 2020 until it's time to um, complete the census which will be around March. Now, we are trying to uh, receive a grant here at Chattanooga State. Also, the Chattanooga Public Library has reached out to us and said, hey, they received like a $10,000 grant, and they said, hey, we would like to partner with Chattanooga State um, to do a silent party on campus. So that silent party on campus will probably be held March the 25th. You can see it right there. We'll have a silent party in the amphitheater. Uh, we'll probably have some music, fun, and different games. And then we will have our own kickoff of the census, which is the census day, which is April the 1st. So we will do something April the 1st and March 
um, the 25th. So if, if you would like to be a part of our census committee, you can um, contact me and you can be on our complete count committee if you like to be in that. Also, um, it's room to receive volunteer hours. If you need it for Tennessee Promise or anything like that, reach out to myself and we will um, help you receive volunteer hours because we will need volunteers for um, these, these events that we are having on campus. All right? Um, next. Next. All right, student life upcoming events. I know a lot of people have been reaching out to me about um, because of the weather, we have not been able to have the food trucks on campus, but they will be here tomorrow. So we will have um, a couple of food trucks on campus tomorrow. They'll be right in front of the Omni building, um, the Crab Trap, and off the grill by Chef Q will be here tomorrow. All right, from 1030 till 1 o'clock. So please patronize those um, businesses. There are black-owned businesses here in Chattanooga. Uh, for this is all in Black History Month. I'm giving you the rundown of Black History Month. Um, also, our Cafe Connection will be held in this room next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. We have an awesome lineup that, that will be here. Um, some of um, African, it's, I think it's on the African American Black Experience in Chattanooga. Uh, the people that we have coming in, will be um, our very own that works here now with the Gates Grant, Mrs. Sarah Brownax will be one of our, um, on our panel. Um, Urban Overton um, will be on our panel. Um, we have a guy named Virgil McGee. He's, like, he's 86 years old, guys, and he's still a barber here in Chattanooga. He owns about three or four barber shops here um, in Chattanooga. So he'll be talking about entrepreneurship, so we're going to try to connect him with our TCAT students. Um, also, Warren Mackey will be here as well to speak. He um, used to be a professor here at Chattanooga State. Um, so please come out to that on next Tuesday at 11 o'clock in this room. Um, we have our club and organization fundraiser will be on the 25th. Uh, so please be sure to support your clubs and organizations. We're going to try to be in an amphitheater, if, but if weather does not permit, we will bring it in the inside right here in the cafeteria, and we'll go all the way down this hallway. The Soul Food Lunch, and I know everybody's looking forward to that. <laughs> the Soul Food Lunch. It is February the 27th, um, so please be sure to come to the Soul Food Lunch, and it'll begin in the gym from 1030. We have to be out of there by 1 o'clock. So please bring your IDs, guys. It's very important to have your IDs. Um, we will the Latin, uh, we will have just mercy on campus, okay? We have not figured it out, but we will have it on campus now, um, and we just need to find out the location of where we're going to have it. But we will show the movie Just Mercy on campus on March the fourth. All right. Last but not least, guys, what I want you to understand and I want to talk to you about is flyers, okay? If you are a part of a club and organization, you for one. Before you hang up a flyer, it needs to be approved by the Student Life Department. Or if, it, or if it's not approved by the Student Life Department, it should have a club number on it from the marketing department. Now, in placing those flyers up, we would like for you to keep those flyers, and I'm going to tell you like this, you need to keep those flyers off of the painted walls, especially in the new B-Wing and the Omni. They re did that whole area back there and we see flyers and stuff with tape and all that stuff on the wall guys please be sure to just either use the bulletin boards or you can put some on the glass but make sure you have all the corners um, buckled down if you do that as well so like I said try to stay off the walls as much as possible um, when hanging up flyers uh, are there any other questions from anyone all right. Um, thanks. Okay, so now we have Kelvin to speak about the Iron Rex. How's everyone doing today? Good, good. Well, I'm Kelvin Clay. I'm the intramural coordinator here on campus. And I'll be very, very brief. I know it's about time for our next class. I just want to speak about a couple of events for student engagement. Uh, we have the uh, Atlanta House basketball game coming up. It's a great event to bring your family and friends out. 
Uh, if you want to come and see a good, great basketball game of professional athletes, we also have a Smash Brothers tournament that we collaborated with the Asian Culture Club that will be coming up uh, February 19th. If you're interested in joining that event, uh, it'll be a great time playing Smash Brothers. You have to, all you have to do is sign up on ChatSync, uh, go to the Ancient Reels tab, and just fill out your registration form. Uh, also, just about all of our events are on ChatSync. I hope we all know about ChatSync at this point in time. ChatSync is a great hub to just figure out everything that's going on on campus. Whether it be free food, giveaways, events, et cetera, et cetera. Just, uh, just by getting involved and being engaged on campus, ChatSync is the way to go. Again, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I hope y'all had a great academy. me. Thank you. Have a good Okay, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Jones. lab that will be open to the students. Uh, I'm going to try and get on the schedule for uh, next cabinet meeting so I can show you pictures and stuff, but it's pretty much 3D printers, routers, design, um, a space for you guys to be able to be creative, entrepreneurship, stuff like that. So start to get excited. You're going to hear a lot more about that in the future. Guys, I want to give. I want you to give yourselves a hand. This is amazing energy for this time of year, and so we want to continue with our next two cabinet meeting. Do we know? March 18th. Am I? We'll let you know. But please come back. Your energy is necessary. And Belinda Smith has something to say. turning my back to you. I'm Melinda Sears-Smith and I am a counselor here at Chattanooga State. Offices IMC 124. Now, what I'm talking to you about today is a very serious issue. Domestic violence. We are having a lecture on uh, next month. That is March the 19th. There will be a lecture in C30. And then we will have a luncheon at 12.30 in this room. Domestic violence, there is a way out. You, somebody you know, when you become an employer, some of your workers, some of your co-workers, you never know when you can use this information. So please put that on your calendars, March 19th, and you'll see it, it will come out. March 19th, Domestic Violence Awareness Lecture and Luncheon. Thank you. So on, anyone else? On behalf of SGA, thank you all so much for coming. Hope you all had a, had a good time. And hope to see you next time. Woo.